Hey folks, and uh, thank you for joining me again. Um, I'd like to discuss the 2010 uh, elections, the senatorial elections that are going on across this country uh, that will happen later this year. There's a couple of very important races. First of all, let me say that the American people are going to have an opportunity to stop cap and trade, to stop massive government spending, and to uh, voice their opposition to having terror trials in the United States. Um, let's now move on to a couple of the specific races that are going to happen across this country. First of all, if you ask me what the three most important races that are happening this year, my answers would be Pennsylvania, uh, Nevada, and Florida. And let me go one by one a little bit. Uh, Pennsylvania is a battleground state. It will probably be the closest race this year. Uh, let's just say that I am not happy with Senator Arlen Specter uh, switching of political parties for political convenience. This race is important because I think voters in the state of Pennsylvania have an opportunity to voice their opposition to Arlen Specter and his massive spending big government policies. Now Specter has been running, Specter is probably going to run against former Pennsylvania Congressman Pat Toomey. Uh, a fiscal conservative who I hope wins. But nonetheless, Specter right now is in the midst of a Democratic primary against a guy by the name of Congressman Joe Sestak. And let me tell you something that angers me and should anger the voters of Pennsylvania, both Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Specter has been going around. Jo Joe Sestak was in the United States military for over 20 years. Uh, and he served this country courageously. He's been in Congress the past couple of years, but he, for most of his life, he was in the United States military. Specter says that Sestak missed a lot of votes in Congress. So he says that if he were still in the military, uh, he would be AWOL. I don't think that we should question people's military service in a political campaign, no matter what. If Specter wants to make an issue out of Sestak's missed votes, why can't he just say that Congressman Sestak has missed votes? He doesn't have to call him AWOL or attack him personally or attack his service to our country. Now, if I were living in Pennsylvania, I would not be voting for Joe Sestak. I'd be voting for Pat Toomey. Nonetheless, I would want to hope that a, a campaign of ideas would be run against Sestak, not a campaign of insults and personal attacks, which Specter has run. And, and this is the kind of typical Arlen Specter uh, behavior, running on, on, you know, attacking people instead of pointing to your own record. Uh, Senator Specter has been uh, voted for the $787 billion stimulus, which didn't lead to many jobs. I hope Pat Toomey wins, and I honestly hope that Joe Stes Sestak wins the Democratic primary just to show that personal attacks have no place in political campaigns. Now, moving on to Florida, it's obvious that the Republicans are going to win in this state. Governor Charlie Crist is exactly what's wrong with American politics today. Governor Chris stood with President Obama in supporting the $787 billion stimulus that created few jobs at the expense of taxpayers. Governor Chris now denies that he ever supported that $787 billion stimulus. Chris has transformed himself from a moderate Republican trying to run to the right. Uh, he, he would have voted for the $787 billion stimulus. Uh, he supported cap and trade in his home state. Uh, he also you know, opposed spending cuts in his home state. So Charlie Crist is exactly a typical politician pandering to the voters, depending on what year it is. And his opponent, former Florida House Speaker Marco Rubio, is clearly, clearly the more fiscally responsible choice in that race. Rubio is committed to lowering taxes, uh, less government, and creating jobs in this country. So I hope he wins in that respect. Uh, another important race is Nevada. Uh, Senator Harry Reid has failed the people of Nevada and the people of America with his liberal agenda, uh, whether it be massive deficits, uh, failed stimulus proposals that didn't create jobs, uh, fighting for tax increases, or even saying that the Iraq war was, quote, lost. And I, I believe that the people of Nevada have a tremendous opportunity to elect a reformer uh, named Sue Loudon, who is a former state senator from Nevada uh, and a former anchor woman. Um, she's from the great state of New Jersey. She's been in Nevada the past 30-something years. Uh, she's a great reformer, and I think she's committed to uh, the same type of fiscally responsible principles that really have been lost in Washington, not only under this president, but under uh, 
the last Congress as well. Um, and another important race, I believe, is New Hampshire. Judd Gregg has served the state well. Uh, Kelly Ayo, the state's attorney general, I believe will be, like Chris Christie, like Bob McDonald, will be another fiscally conservative law and order Republican who I believe can lead the state in a better times and the country in better times as well. Uh, another important race, obviously, is the state is in Arkansas. Uh, I respect, uh, I don't know who the Republicans are going to nominate in that state. What I do know is that I believe to the voters of that state should say no to cap and trade, no to government-run health care, and no to, to trying terrorists in the United States. Therefore, they should vote against Senator Blanche Lincoln um, for the sake of their state and country. So, so there's some very important races uh, going on in this country, and I think that this is an opportunity for the American people to voice their opposition to cap and trade, government-run health care, and terror trials in the United States. At the same time, I think that despite our differences with this president, we need to respect this president and the office he holds and support him when it comes to sending in troops to Afghanistan and slowly withdrawing from Iraq in a way that's safe. Uh, I believe we can reach bipartisan con consensus on certain issues with this president. I think that if this president would adopt uh, the Massachusetts health care reform plan. That would be a plan that both Republicans and Democrats could join on to. I think this president would – this president has made efforts on tax cuts to kind of join together. I wish he would go farther and say, I'm not going to let the Bush tax cuts expire on businesses. Um, this president has – in some area, this president has not been very bipartisan in many ways. He has been in other ways. Uh, I hope that he does better in the future, but I, as, you know, I, I am in the opposition. Nonetheless, I believe that it would be best for the country if consensus could be met and things can get done, which is going to require you know, undoing cap and trade, passing a different kind of health care bill that lowers costs without raising taxes and that doesn't have a government takeover. That's going to include having terror trials at Guantanamo, not in any of our cities or jail systems around here. And I think that's very important. I think that the president and Republicans should work together because the American people clearly do not like cap and trade. They clearly do not like this health care bill, and they clearly do not like bringing Guantanamo terrorists to the United States for trials.